الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد in our previous classes we were reading that which the author here mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala about about the prohibition of bribery and the different aspects that that this occurs the different aspects of arishwa whether one will bribe someone directly to give them that right that they do not deserve or to prohibit someone a right from that which they deserve or not directly by giving a gift by giving a gift and we have seen the issue of hadaya ad ummal hadaya ad ummal giving the government workers and the state officials and those who have particular positions and offices that they receive wages for for performing their duties to give the likes of these individuals a gift is also forbidden and prohibited and not allowed. Rather, it's considered here from the major sins, gurul, gurul. And we have seen the wisdom behind that, that for one, it uh, is a means to cause the individual to become uh, inclined to that person and to be unjust in his ruling and his dealing and to possibly give the individual a right he does not have or to overlook some affairs with regards to him and the likes like this. And this is the case if the person who gave the gift in the first place, he was sincere and he only wanted to give a gift. But many times this is not the case for the people in these particular positions, in these particular offices and the likes like this. That one will give them a gift many times in order to draw them, to draw them close to them, in order for them to bring some benefit about for them or to overlook some affairs and the likes like this. So from this aspect that it could lead to injustice that it could be at bare, at bare minimum, that it could be at bare minimum a means that leads to injustice and corruption of the order uh, of the society and the likes like this, then this is, this is forbidden, then this is forbidden. So for example, the one who has a public office or he has uh, a position where he uh, is paid wages and he's required to perform responsibilities and duties, it's not allowed to give this individual a gift any from those citizens who come to deal with that individual in that office, who come to deal with that individual in that office. It's not allowed for them to give the gift and neither is allowed for them to accept that. They have wages that they are paid to perform these obligations and to fulfill these requirements. And uh, many times a person who will come and only give them a gift in order to have some hand with them, in order for them to do something for them, uh, violating the rights of others, giving them preference and showing them uh, favoritism and the likes like this, or overlooking some, some faults or mistakes that they have, or overlooking some violations that they have in order to get his paperwork through, or to get yani, his, uh, his aims and his goals achieved, and the likes like this, by, by violating the rights and overlooking uh, the requirements and the likes like this. So this could lead to this affair if it was not intended in that in that manner in the first place. So all of this is forbidden. We send the example likewise, one who was a teacher, anyone who was a teacher for uh, the, the government schools or the state schools and the likes like this, the one who has in his hands the, the, the grades of the students and it's according to his judgment the stu whether the student will pass or whether the student will fail, whether the student will pass or whether the student will fail. It's not allowed to give the likes of this teacher a gift. Any, any form from the student. It's not allowed for the student to give the likes of this teacher a gift because it could cause his heart to deal unjustly in dealing with his grades and to overlook some um, errors or mistakes that he has and to be gentle in dealing with him and not being just and showing favoritism and showing, fav and showing favoritism. The people of not, as they mentioned likewise, for example, the doctor, someone who is a doctor and he has a, he has a patient and the doctor, of course, no doubt he's getting paid for his wages. He's getting paid for his wages and his position that he's there. He's a doctor and he performs his, uh, his occupation and he has a salary for that and he's paid wages for that. So therefore, it's not allowed for the patient to give him a gift, to give him a gift. And he could, because this could be a means 
if it was not even attended, if it was not even attended, that this could be a means for now this doctor to show more favoritism and concern for this particular patient and to, be, to, to tell the to people, look out for this patient. He has a special eye with me. He has a special hand with me. And this would, lead for, this would also lead to the other patients who do not have the money to give gifts or who, or who did not give the gifts. Maybe they will, be, they will be shown uh, a different type uh, of dealing and maybe they will be oppressed. And likewise, this could lead to the affair of this bribery being set in place that the person, he will not do his job except for a gift except for a gift, and this is something that is also seen. Sometimes particular secretaries and particular offices who take care of documents and the likes like this, that whenever a person, he will send his paperwork forward at the same time, maybe that secretary or maybe that person in the office, he'll open up his drawer. He will open up his drawer, meaning it's known that along with putting your paperwork in, you're supposed to put something in the drawer along with that, meaning a gift, meaning it's something that is known. So if the, if the gift doesn't go in the drawer, then maybe the paperwork is not dealt with properly. So it leads to this affair being yani, a means of violating the rights and corrupting the order of society and the likes like this. So therefore it's not allowed. So therefore it's not allowed. As for in other situations, not in the likes of this case, then it's allowed. Of course, we've seen that it's rather recommended to give gifts. So for example, a teacher, a teacher for example, who teaches the children uh, in the masjid, it's allowed for that child to give that teacher any a gift because it's not it's not hope that he's going to pass them or to fail them and the likes like this so in this circumstance is different as for whenever it's a public office or it's a, it's a, it's an official office or the person he's getting paid wages for his for his uh, for his uh, for his work and then it's hoped from this individual particular benefit or an advancement or is feared likewise like a teacher in a public school or in a private school or in the official offices, it's, it's in his hands that a person will fail or will, or will flunk, that a person he will pass or he will fail. So therefore, for this reason here, it could, lead, it could lead to this favoritism being shown and to this bribery taking place, whether it was intended or not. As for uh, a, a teacher who's teaching the children uh, the, and the likes like this, Yanni, for free, or in the masjid and the likes like this, this, it's not the same situation. Whether he gave him a gift or not, it's not going to, and he changed the, the dealings like him to, to, show, to show love for the teacher or to show respect for the teacher, the teacher and the likes like this. So the circumstances are different. So the one who has uh, an office or the one who has a position and, he's get, and he gets paid wages for that, and he gets paid, and he gets paid wages for that, and then at the same time, and he gets hope from him certain uh, certain benefits or fear or feared from him that he will not perform his duty properly and the likes like this to give him a gift is considered from the same aspect Good. to give him a gift is considered from the same aspect of rishwa and it's not allowed and it's not allowed likewise we were rece we re read in the previous class the chapter with regards to the shafa'ah and this is where we had stopped in our previous class babul hida al hadiyya babul hadiyati al shafa'ah the chapter with regards to giving gifts for uh, someone to make intercession on behalf of them. We have seen in our previous class likewise that the intercession is whenever an individual, he will be in need and he will need something from someone and he's not able to go to them directly because he has no relationship with them. So therefore he'll go to, the, to a second person who has a connection and who, who has a connection and relationship with the individual that the first person uh, needs something from, needs something from and he will ask him to go to that individual or to that, uh, that party and the likes like this or to that office on behalf of him, on behalf of him to bring about some good for him or some benefit in the worldly life or in order to remove some harm from him. So if the intercession is for something that is permissible, if the intercession is for something that is allowed, then this is considered an action of worship and it's something that a person he will do for the sake of Allah and he will hope for the reward from Allah Azawajal. He will hope for the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. The shifa'ah is something that someone he will do for his brother and he will use his status or his rank or his position with particular people in order to help his brother and to aid him and to support him. So it must be for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is number one. Number two, if the shifa'ah or the intercession was done on behalf of somebody for something that's haram and not permissible, that's haram and not permissible, then this is not allowed in the first place. And this is not allowed in the first place. So therefore, the, in both cases, it's not allowed to receive a gift. It's not allowed to receive a gift for interceding on behalf of others. For interceding 
on behalf of others. So the one, who's, the one who intercedes on behalf of somebody for something that is allowed and permissible, something that is good and, and, and noble and upright, then that person, he does that for the sake of Allah. Then that person, he does that for the sake of Allah. If somebody tried to give him a gift for that, then he will refuse it and he will not accept it. Then he will refuse it and he will not accept it and he will tell them that this intercession that I made and this effort I made on your behalf is for the sake of Allah. And the reward is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the reward is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Zakhallahu khayra. As for the one who interceded on, on behalf of somebody for something haram and impermissible, and then somebody wanted to give him a gift for that, likewise it's not allowed. It's not allowed to intercede in the first place. So how could he repay him and recompense him with a gift yani for interceding on his behalf for something haram? So this is even more severe. So this is even more severe. So this is the case with, with the shifa'ah. So the author, he mentioned uh, the narrations and we read, he says, وَعَنْ أَبِي أُمَامَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ عَرْفُوَا مَنْ شَفَعَ عَلِيَأَخِيهِ شَفَعَةٍ فَأَهْدَ لَهُ هَدِيَ عَلَيْهَا فَقَبِيلَهَا فَقَدْ أَتَى بَابًا عَظِيمًا مِنْ أَبْوَابِ الرِّبَا رَوَهُ أَبُ دَاوُدْ The author, he mentioned the narration of Abu Umamah رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whoever intercedes on behalf of his brother, that whoever interce intercedes on behalf of his brother, meaning an intercession for something that, that is beneficial and something that is allowed and something that is good, and he helping him get a position in a particular job or an occupation, or, or, or helping him get admitted into a particular university or whatever the, uh, the affair may be from the affairs that are, that are beneficial and from the affairs that are allowed and from the affairs that are permissible. He, whoever helped his brother to do this, he, intercede, he, 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 he made an intercession on behalf for his brother and then uh, his brother gave him a gift and he accepted that, then indeed he has come to one of the, one of the great aspects from the aspects of a riba of riba yani meaning he has fallen into this affair. So the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that this is similar to riba or that he's coming to the avenues, from the, for a great avenue, from the avenues of riba then this is an indication that this is not allowed. And this is in order to run the people away from this. Yani, and the fact is that the individual, he does the intercession for the sake of Allah. A person, he will make an intercession on behalf of his brother and he will help him in this manner with the status that he has for the sake of Allah. So the fact that he receives on top of that, another benefit is like interest. It's like interest, because in interest, whenever a person he pays the riba, he pays the amount that he owes, and likewise he pays more. So this person here, he had, uh, he had done uh, what he was supposed to do, and he, he had interceded on behalf of that individual, and now he has a reward. He has a reward with Allah Azza wa Jalla, and likewise the individual is considering him Yani from those who are noble and helpful and, and praiseworthy. And then on top of that, he receives a reward from the, from, from the gift and the likes like this. So this is an increase on that which is allowed. So from this aspect, it's similar, it's similar to riba. And this is what is intended here in Allah knows best. And likewise, with regards to the, the riba, the interest, whenever something is halal and it's permissible, the dealings and the contracts, maybe originally they're permissible whenever the interest is, but whenever the interest gets involved now, it removes all of that and destroys all of that. That, that, that which was permissible before now becomes, now becomes haram and that, uh, that uh, permissibility is violated and is corrupted. So in the same manner, the person who interceded on behalf of somebody for his brother and that reward that he's seeking with Allah Azza wa Jal and that great uh, blessing that he's hoping from Allah Azza wa Jal is violated. is violated and he has no reward anymore in that manner because he had received a worldly reward on behalf of that. So the intercession... If it's for something good, it must be for the sake of Allah. It must be for the sake of Allah. And if it was for something foul, then no doubt he could not receive a gift for that, for doing something evil and something that is haram. So in any case, it would not be allowed to accept that and Allah knows best. Especially if it was in the case of somebody who interceded on behalf of their brother for something that's obligatory. For something that's obligatory. That people of not, as they mentioned, for example, an individual, he's weak and he's oppressed, and, uh, he, and somebody has uh, status or position or a good relationship with somebody of authority. And he's able to go to that person of authority and intercede on behalf of his brother who is weak and oppressed. Who is weak and oppressed. So here, the one who has the ability to aid his brother while he's oppressed, this is an obligation. This is an obligation. Unsur akhaka, dhariman o madhruman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, aid your brother whenever he is oppressed or, or, or oppressed. So to aid the, the believer who is oppressed is an obligation for the one who has the ability. For the one who has the ability. So the type of intercession now, 
here in this example it would be considered an obligation upon that person. So even greater is not allowed for him to take any money or take a gift based upon that. Based upon that, whether it's an obligation that he has to perform for the sake of Allah in the first place, that he has to perform for the sake of Allah in the first place. The author he says, وَرَوَى إِبْرَهِيمُ الْحَرْبِ عَنْ عَبْدَ اللَّهِ بِنْ مَسْعُودٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَنَّهُ قَالْ أَسُحْتُ أَنْ يَطْرُبَ الرَّجُلُ وَالْحَاجَةَ الْحَاجَةَ فَتُقْضَى لَهُ فَيُهْدَى إِلَيْهِ فَيَكْبَرُهَا فَيُهْدَى يعني there's a yeah here but it should be Arif Maksura Arif Maksura فَيُهْدَى إِلَيْهِ فَيَكْبَرُهَا The author he mentioned a narration by Ibrahim al-Harbi رحمه الله تعالى from the narrators of hadith he mentioned a narration from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. وَهُوَ حَدِيثٌ مَوْقُوفٌ حَدِيثٌ مَوْقُوفٌ Meaning that this is from the statement of Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه. He says, أَسُحْتُ أَنْ يَطْرُبَ الرَّجُلُ الْحَاجَةِ فَتُقْضَى لَهُ فَيُهْدَى إِلَيْهِ فَيَكْبَرُهَا أَسُحْتُ He's saying here, رضي الله عنه, أَسُحْتُ We have seen that uh, in many cases this word is used to refer to specifically uh, as a rishwa. Arishwa and the bribes and the bribes that are paid and this is something that the Yehud they were well known for and as suhd in general is any taking something or, or is committing a crime a, 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 a prohibition something that is a violation that is impermissible and severely impermissible as suhd and al haram shadid al tahrim something that is uh, severely impermissible and not allowed and from that taking the wealth of the people unrightfully and from that bribery and from that this affair here this affair here. So he's saying, Radiallahu anhu, that a suht or this impermissible wealth, you know, taking the people's wealth unrightfully, or this type of bribery, and the likes like this is that a man he will uh, he will request for a particular need to be taken care of, and to be to be taken care of for him on his behalf, and then it will be taken care of, and somebody will fulfill that for him, and then he and then he will be given a gift for that, and he, then he will accept it, and then he will accept it. Yani, so he's considering here this to be a suhd, yani, meaning that it's haram, that's very impermissible, that it's not allowed, that it's not allowed, that a person, he will have a need, and then he will ask an individual to help him to do that, and to intercede on his behalf, and fulfill that for him, and then after that he will go to him, and he will give him a gift for that, and then that person would accept it. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu is saying this is suhd, this is suhd. So he says, وَلَهُ عَنْ مَسْرُوقٍ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ And also it's been narrated by him, يعني إبراهيم الحربي رحيمه الله from Masruq, Masruq ibn Ajda. He's from the great students of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He's a Mukhadram. He died in the year 63. He says that Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه, he says, مَنْ رَدَّ عَنْ مُسْلِمٍ مَظْلَمَةً فَأَعْطَاهُ عَلَيْهَا قَلِيلًا أَوْ كَثِيرًا فَهُوَ سُحْتِ قُلْنَا يَا أَبْ عَبْدِ الرَّح إِلَّا الرِّشْوَةَ فِي الْحُكُمْ قَالَ ذَلِكَ كُفْرٌ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ So Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu he mentions in this narration here also hadith al mawquf that uh, whoever that whoever uh, defends his brother from an oppression and he defends his brother while he's being oppressed and he takes care of that for him and then his brother gave him a gift for that whether it's a small or a lot and he, whether it's a small gift or a large gift then this is considered suhd then this is considered suhd that the brother that a person he will take care of a need for his brother and help him out and he intercede on his behalf and the likes like this and then after that he gives him a gift he says here all the Allah anhu that this is considered from those affairs that are that are impermissible and haram. So they say now, the students of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, they said, oh Abu Abdurrahman, we did not used to think that suhd was anything except for arishwa, fil hukum. We used to think that the word suhd, whenever it's used, what is intended is uh, bribery in the, the judgment, meaning in the courts, meaning in the courts. And this was the most well-known actions of, of the Jews with regards to that. And with regards to the rishwa, what they were well known for specifically was with regards to making judgments in the courts and rulings against the people and the likes like this, that they would lean and that they would be inclined to the one who would pay them and therefore they would rule for them and they would contradict the, 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 the rule of Allah Azza wa Jal in order to rule for these people and to overlook uh, affairs in order to have a dollar or in order to have some money or some wealth and the likes like this in order to have, to, in order to have some wealth 
and the likes like this, and the ruling. So then Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says, as for that, as for the rishwa, with regards to the judgment and the ruling, he said, that's disbelief. That's disbelief. He said, what I'm talking about here, this is suht, and this is, a, this is haram, this is severely impermissible. As for what you're talking about, then this is disbelief. Then this is disbelief. Then he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكُ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ And whoever does not rule and judge uh, with that which Allah has revealed, then indeed these people, they are, they are disbelievers. They are disbelievers. So ruling uh, by other than that which Allah has decreed or ruled, we have seen in previous classes in Kitab al-Tawheed specifically, that uh, this is different levels. And from... Uh, and some aspects of that will be considered major disbelief and other aspects of that will be considered will be considered lesser than that. It will be considered a major sin, but it will not be considered a uh, major, major disbelief according to the circumstance and according to the situation and particularly the creed of the one who had ruled in that manner. And particularly the creed of the one who has ruled uh, in that manner. So this is the issue with regards to the shafa'ah, meaning the intercession, that somebody who would intercede on behalf of his brother to help him, to aid him, to bring about some good for him, or to remove or lighten some harm or difficulty from him. This has to be for the sake of Allah. It's not allowed to give a gift for that or to receive a gift for that. So the shafa'ah, again, likewise, similar to the hadiyah, this is something that is praiseworthy in general. But there are circumstances and situations that it's not allowed because of what it could lead to. Because, because of what... It could lead to. So with regards to the shifa, it has proceeded. La shifa fi al-hudud. There's no shifa. There's a chapter about that previously. You cannot intercede on behalf of somebody in the in the legal punishments and the limits that have been set. We have seen that that's a major crime and a major sin likewise. That uh, uh, the legal punishment would reach the ruler. It would reach the ruler and the judge would, would learn about it. And then somebody would come and try to intercede on behalf of that person after that ruling has already reach the Muslim judge. Now it's not allowed to intercede. Rather now that, that affair has been made public and that the Muslim judge has learned about that affair, the law of Allah must be applied. And the rule of Allah must be implemented. Must be implemented. And it's not allowed to intercede at this time. And we've seen the issues of that. And likewise, it's not allowed to intercede as well uh, uh, for somebody if it's going to harm them or harm others. And he is going to bring about harm or to intercede on behalf of somebody in a manner that is harmful for, for somebody or their rights are going to be violated or to intercede in an issue that is impermissible or not allowed. All of this is not permissible. Likewise, to intercede in this manner and then take a gift for that and to take a gift for that. So after this, the author, he says, بَابُ الْغُلُولِ بَابُ الْغُلُولِ وَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى The chapter of Al-Ghulul. We have seen previously that Al-Ghulul, it means Al-Khiyana fil maghnam or Al-Khiyana fil maghnami wa nahwihi. This is what is intended specifically. Al-Khiyana fil maghnam wa nahwihi. Al-Khiyana, meaning betrayal and, uh, and to act in, in treachery. And what is intended yani, specifically uh, is to take from the spoils of war before they're divided. Before they're divided. So in the, in, the, in, the, in the battles with the Muslim army, that which is obtained from the wealth of the enemy, it must be gathered and collected and turned in. And then after that, those spoils will be uh, calculated and then they will be divided amongst the soldiers' property. Amongst the soldiers' property. And to take anything from that wealth there before it's divided is considered gulul. It's considered gulul. And this is a major sin. Similar like that was the gift that is given to the government worker. And that was also considered gulul. Because any here, the, the worker he's working for, the Muslim government. And he's getting paid wages for the Muslim government. And then he takes something on top of that, along with that. And he, so this is something that he does not deserve. That he does not deserve. This has proceeded. That was also considered gulul. And khiyana, meaning he's taking the wealth and the money unlawfully. But, but in general, the gulul here is what, what is intended is taking the taking from the spoils of war before they are collected and divided properly. And he's stealing that. Stealing that. So the author, he says, وَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَمَا كَانَ لِلْنَبِيًّ أَنْ يَغُولُ وَمَنْ يَغُولُ يَأْتِي بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And uh, the author, he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal that uh, he says, and it's not for a prophet to make the غُولُ it's, it's not for a prophet 
and Yagul, you need to make the Gulur, meaning to take anything from the spoils of war before they are collected and divided. Before they are collected and divided. It's not, it, it's not for a prophet to ever do that. And then Allah, he says, and whoever makes the ghulul, and then he will come with that which he has stolen on the day of resurrection. We have seen that likewise in the previous class as well. The individuals, they will come, وَرِيَذُ billah. Well, some of them he had taken, some of them he had taken camels, others he has taken sheep, other he has taken, others he has taken horses. And the likes like this, he will come carrying those affairs. Others he has taken gold or silver. He will come carrying that on his back. He will come carrying that on his back. Yani, and, 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 and while, while those things uh, are making the, the noises that they make, yani, and the likes like this, and this is yani, in, in disgrace and an exposure in front of the people. Even some of them will ask for the Prophet وسلم, to intercede on behalf of them and help them at this time. And the Prophet وسلم, will say to them, I, amliku laka min Allahi qad I have no authority. I cannot help you against Allah whatsoever today. I have, I have conveyed the message to you. I have conveyed the message to you. So the, the message is conveyed. So the people of knowledge, they mentioned that the reason for the revelation of this particular verse, that this verse here was revealed. There's a reason for, for, for this particular verse being revealed. And that is that uh, in, one of, uh, in one of the battles, the, in, one of the, in one of the battles on the day, it was on the day of Badr, in the battle of Badr, that there was a qatifa hamra, there was a red garment that had come up missing. That uh, after the battle, they had gathered the spoils of war, and then they were looking for a particular garment, and that garment they could not find it. It was missing. So some of them they said uh, possibly the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he took it, and he thinking that maybe it's allowed for him because he is the leader and he is the one of authority, and then this verse was revealed. And then this verse was revealed. It is not for a prophet to ever steal and take from the spoils of war before they have been collected and divided property. And so if that's the case, if it's not allowed for a prophet, if it's not allowed for a prophet, then those after the prophets and messengers, alayhim salatu wasalam, definitely it's not allowed. Definitely it's not allowed. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not take, he did not take that. And this is something that they had thought, and he possibly because he, he, is the, he is the leader and he is the, the ruler of, uh, of the army and the likes like this. But Allah Azza wa Jal, he revealed in this case to clarify that that was not the case and that, that that is not allowed, not for a prophet or anyone else. Not for a prophet or anyone else. To clarify again that this is going to be something from the major sins. Something from the major sins. That a prophet, he will never do that. And anybody who does that, then they will come and they will bring that which they had stolen and had taken unlawfully on the day of resurrection billah. so the author he says an abi hurairah radiyallahu anhu annahu qala lamma fataha allah khaybar antalaqna ila alwadi wa ma'a rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abdun lahu yuqalu lahu mid'am yuqalu lahu mid'am falamma nazalna alwadiya rumiya bi sahm famat rumiya bi sahm famat so the author he mentioned the narration of abi hurairah radiyallahu anhu and he says that whenever uh, it was on the day of the conquest of Khaybar, and he, this is briefly after the conquest or, or, of Khaybar, that we left, we went out to a valley, and along with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one of his slaves, and his name is Mid'am. And his name is Mid'am. So whenever they came into this valley, suddenly he was struck with an arrow and he died. And he, this particular slave that was along, that was along with them, his name is Mid'am. So he had been along with them, and likewise, it's mentioned yani, that they had all they had they had all been engaged in this battle, and he briefly, and he, not not long before this, and then suddenly they come to this valley, and uh, the this uh, individual he was struck with an arrow and he died, he died. So the companions they said, "Fakulna haniyan lahu bishahada, ya Rasulullah." So the companions, whenever they seen this, he was struck with an arrow suddenly out of nowhere, and he died like this. And they're in, they're in, uh, in, in war, and they're, and they're, and they're in war, in a battle. And so the companions they said, "Oh, how good is it for him that he is given, uh, he's given martyrdom, and he is, he's going to be a shahid, or messenger of Allah, and he testified for him for this great and high rank and status, and he because they're in battle, and he had been fighting along with them, and now he is struck with an arrow and he died." 
So they're looking at the situation from the apparent, from that which is apparent. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَقَالَ كَلَّا وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ He said, كَلَّا وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ I said, he said, no, I swear by the one who my soul is in his hand. إِنَّ الشَّمْلَةَ أَلَتِي أَخَادَهَا يَوْمَ خَيْبَرْ لَتَلْتَهِبُ عَلَيْهِ نَارًا أَخَادَهَا مِنَ الْمَغَانِمِ لَمْ تُسِبْهَا الْمَقَاسِمِ أَخَادَهَا مِنَ الْمَغَانِمِ لَمْ تُسِبْهَا الْمَقَاسِمِ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, No, I swear by the one whom my soul is in his hand, the shamla that he took on the day of Khaybar. The shamla, yani, it's a garment, a one-piece garment. And it's a one-piece garment, either that would be wrapped around the person entirely or on his top or on his bottom and the like like this. It's a type uh, of, of, of garment, a one-piece uh, of, uh, of uh, material, a one-piece material, a one-piece of material, a one-piece garment from material. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took that. This garment here that he took on the day uh, of Khaybar is, uh, is uh, engulfing him in fire. And he meaning that this garment is turned into flames and he's burning in that. And he's burning in that. He took this garment bef uh, before the spoils they were divided. He took this garment before the spoils were divided. At this time, Fafazia and Nas, at this time, the people, they became very frightened whenever they heard this. Whenever they heard this. This man, he, previously, he's fighting. He, he's fighting along with the believers against the enemies of Allah Azza wa And then suddenly, he's struck with an arrow and dies. And all of the people, they think good about him from what they know and what they have seen. And, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was aware of something that they were not aware of. And that is that he had taken something from the spoils of war unlawfully. And that thing that he had taken was just a garment. It was not gold. It was not silver. It was not great weapons. It was not yani, a great amount of... It's a, it's a garment. A, a one piece uh, of clothing. Yani, of, of cloth. And the likes like this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it's around him go, engulfed, engulfing him in flames. So whenever the people they heard this, they became frightened. فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ بِشِرَاكٍ أَوْ شِرَاكَيْنِ فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَصَّبْتُ يَوْمَ خَيْبَرْ فَقَالَ شِرَاكٌ أَوْ شِرَاكَيْنِ مِنْ نَارٍ أَخْرَجَاهُ So at this time, uh, whenever the people, they became frightened about this affair, and he became very serious now. He became very serious now. So a man, he came بِشِرَاكُ بِشِرَاكَيْنِ The shirak uh, is the shirak al -na'al. It is the seir. It is the, the, it is the string. Uh, that goes on the top of the sandal, where the feet go, where the toes go, that holds the toe onto the bottom of the sandal. There's a string that goes there. There's a string that goes there, and that'll go around the top of the foot and then through the toe, and, and uh, like this, and this is the part that holds, that holds the sandal to the foot, the bottom of the sandal to the foot. It's called shirak. So a man, he brought one or two of those. He brought one, one or two of those. This is something very small. This is something very minor. And he, it's a piece of cloth, and the lights like this are string that's, that's uh, customized to, uh, to where it'll fit on a piece on the bottom of a sandal to hold a person's foot in place. And then he brought one or two of those. And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, I, I got this on the day of Khaybar. I got this, I got this on, the day, on the day of Khaybar. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Shirakun o shirakun o shirakani min nar. He said that those are one or two strings from the fire. And whether it was one or two, Allah wa is a doubt about that. But he, in any case, this, this is something that uh, there's a great threat with, meaning that this is something that, from, that is from the fire, meaning it will be a means to punish that individual had, had he not repented. So this is a clarification that uh, it's not allowed to take anything from the spoils of war, not minor or major, not minor or major. And, and the one who takes something, even if it's something small, or even if something light or something little, or it's not even something that's very valuable. He took that without right from those spoils before they're divided by the Muslim ruler. And the likes like this, this is a major sin. This is a major sin and this is the, the point uh, of the narration. This is the point of, of the narration. And also from the benefits of this narration, likewise, uh, we see that it's not allowed to say about somebody that he's shaheed. And that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he reprimanded them with regards to this. And uh, Abu Khari, uh, Rahimahullah, he has a chapter uh, in his Sahih whenever he mentioned Babu la yuqal fulan shahid and Al Bukhari, Al Imam Al Bukhari, he has a chapter in Sahih Bukhari. It says Babu la yuqal fulan shahid, the chapter that you should not say so and so he's a martyr, and you should never you should never say that directly. You cannot you cannot say that directly. 
Rather, the, what one could say is, it's hope that he's a martyr. It's hope that he's accepted from the shuhada. Oh Allah, accept him from the shuhada. We hope that he, his efforts were accepted, but no one will be certain. No one will be certain about that because this is something from the affairs of the unseen. Just as they thought that was the case from what they seen outwardly, but there was something hidden from them that was a reality that they were unaware of. So likewise, if somebody, he died in battle, and it's apparent, uh, outwardly that maybe he and he was sincere in that but as for the true sincerity that's with Allah Azawajal. so no one will be certain and say so and so is a shaheed so and so is a shaheed so and so is shuhada this is something that uh, a, a person he has no knowledge of this is in reality from the affairs of the unseen after this uh, Bukhari he mentioned ta'liqan qala Abu Hurairah an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahu a'lamu biman yujahidu fi sabirihi Wallahu a'lamu biman yukramu fi sabirihi. There's a narration the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Allah knows best who was fighting in his path. Allah knows best who was wounded in his path. And he meaning in his path, meaning sincerity for the sake of Allah. So therefore, one, he would not say so-and-so is a shaheed. He would not say so-and-so is a shaheed. And this is something that they're doing left and right today. And they, and, and they, they do this, somebody, maybe he's from the most corrupted of the people and he'll die in the worst of places like in these mudaharat and so on and so forth and then somebody he's a shaheed he's a shaheed this is not allowed this is not allowed even if a person he was in a, in a battle and he's fighting with the muslim ruler and he was killed in that manner it's not allowed to say he's a shaheed it's a well one he will say yurja lahu shahada yurja lahu khair we hope that he was accepted. We hope that his efforts are good. But no one would ever say that with certainty because this is something from the affairs of the unknown or from the affairs of the unseen. No one knows who Allah accepts and who Allah does not accept. Similarly like that, one will never say so-and-so is in Jannah. So-and-so is in Jannah. Like, like this, except for those whom Allah and His Messenger have mentioned. And if, except for where there's a clear text, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says so-and-so is in Jannah, then we say so-and-so is in Jannah. Or if he says so-and-so is a shaheed, then we say so-and-so is a shaheed, like this. This is because we have a text from the Quran or from the Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Umar is a shaheed. He said, Uthman is a shaheed. He said that Ali is a shaheed, radiallahu uh, anhum. The, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that. He said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Uthman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah. Abu, uh, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas fil Jannah, all, all of the ones that are known. So we say they're in Jannah. He said, Mihsan, um, Ukash uh, ibn Mihsan is in Jannah. So therefore we say he's in Jannah. But as for people after them, who we have no certain knowledge about, even if they did all of the good deeds, apparently that's what, that, that's what we know from them, we will never be certain about that. Rather we say that we hope he's in Jannah. We hope that Allah will forgive him. We hope that Allah will raise his rank. We hope that Allah will place him and his mercy in, in, in this matter like this. And this is the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. As for the one who died upon sin, who died upon a foul way, uh, and, but we know that he was a Muslim, then we say it's feared for him. It's feared for him that, uh, that he may receive punishment. So likewise, on the other hand, no one will say, so-and-so is in the nar, so-and-so is in the fire. Somebody who was a Muslim, but he died upon major sin, for example. Somebody, he was a Muslim, but he died upon major sin, for, sin, major sin, for example. Nobody would say about him, certainly, he's in the fire, or he's being punished in his grave, or he went to the anger of Allah. What do you have to Rather, it's feared. Those who die, uh, those who die uh, upon sin, it's feared for them the punishment of Allah, Azza wa Jal, and those who die in a good manner, it's hope for them, the mercy of Allah, Azza wa Jal, and anyone who dies upon Islam, then his final destination and his final outcome will, will be the mercy of Allah in the paradise. The mercy of Allah and the paradise. And this is likewise the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. After this, the author he says, Rahimahullah, Babu Ta'atil Umara. Babu Ta'atil Umara. The chapter with regards to obeying the, the, the leaders. Babu Ta'ati al Umara, Yani fil Ma'roof. Yani fil Ma'roof. The obligation of obeying the rulers. Meaning in that which is allowed and permissible. Meaning in that which is allowed and and permissible. This is something, no doubt, uh, of utmost importance. And uh, the, the, the religious affairs and the worldly affairs, they cannot be established properly except if there is a congregation, except whenever there is a congregation and community. And uh, in this manner, the religion is established. The religious affairs are established and the deen is, uh, is established and uh, the tawheed is spread and likewise the sunnah. Whenever there's unification, 
And whenever there is congregation and whenever the, the, the hearts are united upon the truth, upon the correct creed and the, the correct methodology, at this time the, the believers, they become strong. They become strong. And likewise in the worldly affairs as well, the economy and the benefits come in the worldly life as well. Whenever the believers are united upon the correct creed and the correct belief and they're together and they have unity. And they have unity. So this is a legislative goal to be united. To be united. The believers, they should be not united and they should not divide. They should be united upon the truth and not upon falsehood. They should be united upon the, the, the sunnah and not upon innovation. And, and the life scientists, they should be united upon the way of the sahaba and not upon the way of anybody else. And not upon the way of anybody else. Radiallahu anhum. So this is a, no doubt a legislative goal. And this goal cannot be obtained except with a leader. Except with a leader. So if there's no leader, then there will never be unification. If there's no leader, there will never be unification. There will never be unification. There must be a leader. The Muslims, they must have a leader. And uh, there will never be a leader except if there is obedience to his command and to his orders and complying and following his directions. And following his directions. So this is something that is intended specifically. And if that there must be unification. And there can be no unification except if there's a man to, to be united behind. And there, that not exists except along with obeying him and following him. And except with obeying him and following him. So this is from the, the affairs that are of utmost importance. And Allah knows best. Hada. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.